Hello everybody, thank you for tuning in to the Forgotten Film Channel. Today's Forgotten Film star is Eleanor Hunt. Eleanor Hunt was born on January the 10th, 1910 in New York City. She started her career as a chorus girl with the Ziegfeld Follies. In 1928, she was performing in the Broadway play Whoopi when it was adapted into a movie. She was offered the leading role as Sally, which she accepted, and she was put under contract. Uh, now, sadly, her performance in the film was lackluster, and while her contract continued, she never achieved a leading lady role again. In 1931, she married actor Rex Lees. They divorced that same year. In 1933, she married Dr. Frank Nolan. They got divorced in 1935. Her contract expired in 1937. It was not renewed. In 1939, she got married to producer George Herleman. They adopted a daughter, and she left the public eye completely. She died on June the 10th, 1981, at the age of 71. During her 10-year career in the entertainment industry, Eleanor Hunt appeared in 28 films, and what I have for you today is the very last one of those. It's called Stolen Paradise. She's going to fall in love with her stepbrother, Leon Janney. So I hope that you enjoy it. I want to thank you for tuning in to the Forgotten Film Channel. Have a great today. And hopefully tomorrow will be even better. Amen.
Oh, I'll go right now. Say, you say you're going to the, the uh, one here? You wanted to see me, Father O'Malley? Uh, yes, Richard. Uh, sit down. I have just heard from your father, Richard. Uh, uh, he wants you to come home. Oh, but Father, I, I don't want to go home. I want to stay here this summer, as I've always done. I know how you feel, my boy. But your decision cannot be made lightly. But, Father, he couldn't do that. Why, nobody could ever take my mother's place. Of course she won't, Richard. But one must never live completely in the past. Uh, do you remember your mother very well? Oh, yes. I was pretty young when she died, but... But I can never forget her. I know you won't. But you must understand, your, your father has been alone so long. Yes. I guess you're right, Father. I know what you're thinking, my boy. You're puzzled, a bit hurt. You think of this almost as a, a betrayal, a violation of a memory. But it's not that. The lady in question is a very great lady. I met her a long time ago. It may be a little difficult for you at first, but I'm sure that before long you'll come to love her and respect her as your father does. I hope so, Father. Well, now you must hurry, Richard. Uh, your father wants you to take the evening plane in order to be home in time for the ceremony. Well, I only need one bag. No, no, you're to pack all your things. Uh, you see, your father plans to send you to one of the great universities. Oh, but father, I... I want to come back to St. Francis. I thought someday I could be one of you. Ah, my boy, I believe in you. But you're young, Richard. Go into the world for a while. You'll find many things there that are new and strange. Things you haven't known before. Lessons not to be learned in books. And if learning them, you are still of the same mind, uh, you'll be ready to come to us. I won't change. Well, now, run along and pack. I feel certain this will be a great summer for you, in many ways. Yes, in many ways. running into a terrible storm, doesn't it? Rain is a decent thing. I say it looks like a bad storm. Oh, yes, it, it kept me from flying. I mean, I'll get there in time. Yes, where are you going? To Miami. Oh, Miami! Say, that's a great little town, that Miami. I was there in 26. I, cigarette? No, 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 thanks. I, I don't smoke. No? I, I was, I was in Miami in 26. I was selling land there. <laughs> Yeah, it was good land, too. It was very good land. Of course, it was it was underwater, but <laughs> it was good land. Yes, sir. Uh, I guess you're going down there for a vacation. Oh, no, no. I, I'm going to a wedding. You're getting married. No, no, no. My, my father's getting married. Oh, your father's getting married. Well, I was reading in... Your father? <laughs> Say, that's kind of a hot one there, son. Didn't they take a little time and get into it? I guess it's better late than never, though. My, my mother's dead. Oh, I'm awfully sorry. I, I apologize. No offense to it, of course, son. You see, I, my father got married. Your father got married. I mean, my father got married. Everybody, everybody's got a right to get married. I... Every... I'll see you later, sir. Man holding the baby, would you? Oh. Come on, 
Take it. Hmm? Take it. Oh, oh, take it. Yeah, yes. And George, young man? Hmm? Maybe? Oh, the note, that's baby no. No, sir. A uh, uh, lady just left him here for a minute. Welcome home, Mr. Richards. Your father expected you for the ceremony. Yes, I'm sorry. Is he here now? Oh, yes, sir. The reception party is just about over. But you will go right into the drawing room, Mr. Richards. Richards, my boy. How do you do, Father? I... I want to offer my congratulations. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. I'm a very happy man. You do. Mother. Why, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Richard. This is your new sister, Patricia. And I hope you're going to be great friends. Welcome home, Richard. I've waited a long, long time for a brother. Well, I'm, I'm awfully sorry about that. I'm Mr. Oh, Bob. forget it, son. Forget it. Perfectly natural mistake, wasn't it, my dear? <laughs> of course it was. Pardon me, sir, but Mrs. Gordon requests that you start changing. I'll be ready in exactly six minutes. Oh, blast this bad weather. I wanted a chance to be alone with you before all this, but Ellen and I sail on our wedding cruise in about 20 minutes. And wait till you see your mother. She's glorious, my boy. Simply glorious. Oh, I'll bet she is. You and I disappeared into thin air. Do you think anybody'd miss it? No, I think it's a good idea. But did he? Uh, Mary, this is Dickie Gold. You remember my little girl? I'm afraid I don't. Why? Oh, I, I don't know. It was just so long ago. Oh, I do hope Mary and Dickie will see a lot of each other this summer. Of an age, you know. Will you excuse me, please? What are you going to do this summer? Well, I don't know. Why not? Mm. Uh, do you mind? I'm sure they have a lot in common. So nice seeing you. And Mary, you're getting to be a very pretty little child. This is very nice seeing you. Phew, what a woman. Go ahead and sit down, Richard. Is that what everybody calls you? No, well, it's school late. They usually call me Dick. Fine, I like that much better. Mine's Pat. Hello, Pat. Hello, Dick. <laughs> Weddings are such a fuss. Pat, were you ever married? <laughs> yes, Dick. I was ever married. Gosh. But where is... Oh, it didn't last very long. Only long enough to find out that he cared more about my money than he did about me. We were divorced. Gee, that's like... Well, I, I never knew anybody before that... Oh, I know what you're thinking, Dick. That it all sounds very sophisticated and glamorous. But it isn't, really. I beg your pardon. But Mr. and Mrs. Gordon are ready to come downstairs. Come on, Dick. Let's go. You're not nervous about meeting your new mother, are you? Yes, a little. Dick, Ellen's not my real mother either. I lost mine when I was very young, just like you did. 
But Ellen's been more than a perfect mother to me. She's been a wonderful friend, too. Especially since my father died. And you love her. Come on. Oh, dear, I forgot my ring. Where is it, Ellen? I'll get it. Upstairs on my desk. Ellen, dear, I am very proud to present my son. Our son now, Robert. My heavens, you're such a big boy. I'll be 18 soon. Oh, dear, it's all gone now. Why, what's all gone, Ellen? I've always felt as though I were Pat's sister instead of her mother. And today I felt like a young bride again. Now, all of a sudden, you present me with a great big grown man of a son. Well, son, what do you think of your new mother? Oh, I think you're lovely. Thank you, Richard. You're sweet. Well, uh, I guess we'd better say goodbye. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about when I get home. But in the meantime, I want you to have a wonderful summer. Enjoy yourself, son. Father, I'd, I'd like to talk to you about going back to St. Francis. Why, Richard, I, I'd hoped that Pat wouldn't have to stay here alone in this big house. I'm afraid I sort of took it for granted that you'd stay here and take care of her. Oh. All right. I'll take care of her, all right? Fine. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye son. Have a good time. Goodbye, Dad. Goodbye. goodbye. Have a nice trip. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Go get a couple of plates. Mmm, okay. I'm starving. Mm. I could smell those 20 feet underwater. Hey, you're quite a chef, aren't you? Oh, why, there's, there's really nothing to it. There's nothing to cook in hamburger. Look. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but you'll do it with such finesse. Oh, you laughed at me, huh? <laughs> you laughed at me. I didn't say anything, mister. Really, I didn't. Beautiful day. Look at it all about you. <laughs> <laughs> It was always summer. Those hamburgers were good. Mm. Wonderful. Everyone has been very kind to me, uh, especially my sister. I must tell you about her. She swims as fast as I do. Faster, I think. Rides like a cowboy. <laughs> well, not really like a cowboy, but very good. Uh, <coughs> Uh, she is teaching me to play golf and tennis. Uh, oh, I forgot to tell you, she is 28. Uh, and she says herself that her mother always told her she should have been a boy. <laughs> I've told her all about you and that you are a champion, that you are a champion croquet player. <laughs> uh, she laughed at that, but she thought it was fine. The boy seems to be quite happy. Champion croquet player. Ah, oh, mustn't neglect my game. <laughs> Pat, darling, Janet, what are you doing down here? Uh, darling, this is Eric Wynn. 
I have the Indian sign on him, so no trespassing. <laughs> but the quiet one is Lawrence Hodge, and you can do anything you want about him. Gents, this is Pat Morrow. How do you do? Hey, Jim. For the first time, I'm glad I associate with these people. <laughs> Thank you. You must be the brother Mary Hodge talks about. That's right. Well, sit down, sit down. There's no parade going by. Mary, I was so thirsty, I couldn't help but charge a drink on your account. <laughs> That's all what right. would you drink? Nothing for me, please. I can only stay a minute. Now, we're not going to let you go. I have an uncle who's a judge. I'll have him issue a warrant for distraint. The Admiral's waiting for me down there. So? A rival? Very much so. He has first claim on me. For heaven's sake, who is he, Pat? Someone I know? He's my new brother. You know Robert Gordon's son. And he's only 17. A narrow escape, Pat. <laughs> Oh, you can duck him, can't you? I don't want to duck him. He's going north tomorrow, to college. Then, tomorrow night? All right, tomorrow night. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Morrow. Goodbye. Bye, darling. See you tomorrow. <laughs> down to the keys. No. Or Bimini. We'll do it next summer. Oh, this is a long ways off. Now, Dick, school year will be over before you know it. Yeah, well, I'm not gonna like college. That's such a childish thing to say. It isn't like you at all. Well, I'm sorry it sounded that way. It's just that I wouldn't like anything that made this summer come to an end. You've wasted enough film already. Oh, here. Here, this is the last one. Just a minute. Here, take that rope off of there. Now. Now, stand up next to the tree. Why all the contortions? Oh, I, I just thought it'd be sort of nice if we had a picture of us together. Maybe it's kind of sappy, huh? What's sappy about it? I think it's a swell idea. <sighs> oh, dear. You sure and send me one. Oh, well, you know, you, you may not want a copy of this. Of course I do. Why shouldn't I? Well... I read somewhere that a camera shows a woman's true weight, which is at least 15 pounds more than she admits. I can see that you're going to be a great hit with the ladies, my sweet little brother. Ladies? <laughs> what do I want them hanging around for? But I'm all right, not being a lady. Is that it? Sure. Oh, well, well I don't mean that you're not a lady, too. It's, it's just that you don't always... Oh. I don't know how to explain it. Sort of, uh, half a lady. Yeah. Yeah, li like here on the island. Oh, gosh. I hate to believe it. Why? Well, I don't know exactly, except it's... It's a quiet, far away. Will you please rub some of this on my back? Sure. You know, I... I wish we could live here. Sort of a uh, Swiss family garden. No. No, just us. We wouldn't want our parents because, well, they'd have to have bathtubs and ice boxes and radios. Yes, I know. Would you please rub a little on the back of my leg? Hmm. You know, we could take our baths in the ocean. And, and I could catch fish and crabs and shrimp. And I could I could raise you know, great big coconuts and papaya, and even oranges. And then I'd, I'd build you a hut with palm leaves for a roof. It'd never be an end of summer. Thank 
Dean, I swear I wasn't drunk. And he said, uh, Trowbridge, uh, mm, uh, Trowbridge, he says, uh, if you weren't intoxicated, uh, how do you explain the fact that they found you lying unconscious in the lap of the statue of the Finko? Mm. What'd you say? Well, I just drew myself up to my full height and I said, Dean, I guess I must be a creature of impulse. And the Dean says, uh, mm, very likely, Trowbridge. Uh, perhaps that explains the reason why you struck the policeman who found you. Mm. Listen, you guys, I'm trying to bone for a chemistry quiz. You fly today? Nope. Tom's friend, the dean, suggested I put in more hours in my chem book, less in my log book. What a joint. I'm campus for drinking, you for studies, and Alan because he's dopey enough to go in for freshman football. Say, Tom, did you pick up those pictures I asked you to get? Yeah, yeah, I got them. Uh, and, uh, and the guy told me to tell you not to go around leaving film and cameras for a couple of months. They deteriorate or something. I don't know. Hey, let's go to the barn tonight, huh? That's out of bounds. So what? I saw Jerry this afternoon. They got a new show, and she's doing some swell new numbers. Really? Yeah, but hey, what do you say we turn loose on the kid here? It's about time we start his education where the dean leaves off. Hey, Gordon. What? Who hit you? Hey. Hey. Boy, is she smooth. What a babe. Funny, fellas. Not well, no wonder Galahad's not interested in the local talent, my son. Why have you kept the secret in your bosom? Mmm. I could go for a little bit of this myself. She's not my girl. Dibby's on her, Dibby's. She's my sister. Why, of course, Alan, she's his sister. Oh, indubitably. She is my sister. She's his sister. His sister. Naturally, with a sister like this, we couldn't expect a man to be interested in the common variety of mouse like Jerry. Oh, hardly. Now listen, fellas, she is my sister. She hasn't anything to say about where I go or what I do. Then she didn't tell you to keep away from nightclubs? Of course not. That's all I wanted to know. All right now, my boy. Boy, I can feel myself becoming allergic to feathers. Well, Jerry, here, sit down. Oh, it sure was, Jerry. Who's the new recruit? Oh, just my banker. You know, one of the filthy rich. Be nice to me, my boy, some champagne. Name's Gordon. Richard Gordon. Hello, handsome. How do you do? Up till now, not so good. But maybe the depression is over. Oh, come on, let's have a drink. Waiter. But Tom, I really shouldn't. Oh, now, listen, this is Dick's debut. You're not going to let him down, are you? Oh, all right. I'll have a beer. What do you have, Jerry? Ryan water. Make that too. How about you, kid? Hmm? Oh, oh, I don't know. Orange aid, I guess. What's the matter? You got ulcers? Oh, no, no, I just don't drink. Oh. That's bad. That's very bad. Wait, I better bring him an Alexander. Well, don't worry, that's just milk with a little flavoring. <laughs> 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 You can take me home. All right. I'm... I'm... taking Miss Dean home. Boy, do you catch on quick. Shut up, schoolboy. Hey, Dick. How about some folding money? Oh, oh, sure. Thanks, pal. 
Take it easy, kid. You're a fine one to talk. Go on, Dick. Waiter. Waiter. How about another drink for the table there, huh? Come in. It's not often that you find a college man who acts like a gentleman. To get so a girl has to practically carry a club. That's why I like you, Dick. You're... You're... You're all right, too. You sing very well. It's a dog's life. Associating with all kinds of people. Never knowing where the next meal is coming from. Oh, gee, that's tough. I, I'm sorry, Miss Dean. I do wish we could be real friends. I've been alone so long. But what do you care? You're probably like all the other rich guys. I guess you think I'm no good just because I sing for coffee and cakes in a two-bed honky tonk. Oh, but I don't think that. I think you're great. Do you? Yes. Yes, I do. Well, it, it's been nice meeting you. Oh, please stay for a night, Cap. But it's... Well, isn't it pretty late? It's never too late. It'll only take a minute. Well, I'd, I'd like to if, if you don't think I'm trying to be fresh. I want you to stay, Dick. Name your poison, mister. Oh, it doesn't make any difference. Whatever you've got. Uh, this will separate the men from the boys. Dance with me. I've been waiting for this all evening. But I'm not very good. Time you were talking. It's easy, isn't it? Sure. It's fun. And you're. you're oh, I'm sorry I was so clumsy. Oh, What's the matter? Don't you feel well? Or maybe I'm not good enough for you after all. Do you know? Can I speak to Mr. Richard Gordon? <laughs> uh, not unless you got an awful powerful pair of lungs, lady. Because he's two miles from here. And both of them miles is straight up. Oh, well, when's he coming down? <laughs>
Hello? Oh, hello, Jerry. I'd like to thank you for them presently. You really like them? Oh, I'm glad you do. I was afraid you'd still be sore at me. If you happen to be around the club sometime. Oh, any time. How about tonight? I'll be wearing the orchid. Tonight? Oh, why, sure, Jerry. I'll stop by the barn and, and uh, right after the show and I'll take you home. Okay? Oh, no, I won't forget. Goodbye. Now, that's a lesson in what not to do, Gordon. I should have you measured for silver handles. I was, I was only practicing. Sure, I told you you could practice aerobatics, but that didn't mean terminal velocity dives. You say that for the test pilots. Yes, sir. Richard, a father O'Malley. Richard, how you've grown. College seems to agree with you. Uh, may I sit down? Hmm? Oh, yes, please. Oh, sit down, yes. Oh, I'm so sorry, but I, I was just so surprised walking in here and finding you. Well, no more surprise to you than just to me. Uh, you see, uh, I've left St. Francis. No. I felt a little that way myself when the orders came through. Well, that doesn't seem possible. Yes, I let my roots grow deep at St. Francis. It's hard to pull them up. Still, there are compensations. Well, where are you going to go, Father? To the monastery of Saint Sauveur in the Pyrenees. It's lovely country. Father, I, I don't know what to say. Well, you know how I felt about St. Francis. I know how you did feel, but then we, we've been a little out of touch lately. No, no, I, I haven't changed. It's just that, well, time has gone so fast here and oh, I... Oh, I was only teasing. Of course, it's a strange new world. But then you seem to have adjusted yourself to it. My boy, you have grown up, haven't you? With the evidence before me, I deduce that uh, the young ladies entered the picture. Am I right? Yes. Well, tell me about her, Richard. No doubt she's as young and as lovely as the dew on the rose. <laughs> yes, she's very pretty. Well, I'm sorry I can't be here long enough to meet her. Is she visiting here in town? No. No, she works here. Uh, Richard, oh, I don't wish to pry. Would you rather not discuss her? No. It's just you don't quite understand, Father. I'm not in love with her. The mystery grows deeper and deeper. Well, she, she works at the barn. You see, she's older than I am. And the barn, I ought to explain, is a, a sort of nightclub where the students go. Uh, what does she do at the barn? She sings. And you really ought to hear her. She's got a wonderful voice. Uh, Richard, now for the moment let me be your friend, not your father confessor. Is there some way I can help you? No. No, there's nothing to say. Yes, I think I can guess, and you're right. There's really nothing anyone can say. Your own common sense and a certain innate good taste will serve you better than all the rules I could quote you. Now, my time is short, Richard. Boat sails tomorrow night. I'll send you my address when I know where I shall be permanently. Father O'Malley, how can you be sure? To err is human, to repent, divine. Well, a judicious mixture of humanity and divinity ought to lead to a pleasant life. Thank you, Father. I, I think I understand. Well, if you do, you're fortunate. It's a problem that has bothered man all through the ages. Goodbye, Richard. God bless you. And you, Father. Everything's going to be all right. Well, fellas, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Well, home for guys, fella. Oh, thanks. I wish you could all come with me. Not me. I've got a little girl at home waiting for me. I better not bring her around here. You know Dick, he'd wolf her away from you. <laughs> What'd you give Jerry? Oh, just a little bracelet. She didn't want me to spend much on it. My, how times have changed. Uh, <laughs> boy, <laughs> your plane leaves in just 20 minutes. Better yeah. get on your horse. Uh -oh. Stay sober, kid. Give my regards to the sunny south. And if you get back in time, don't forget you're going skiing with us. Don't forget to get back in time for the New Year's house party. I won't forget. 
Well, go on, fellas, and Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Let's have a nice church. Oh, have a good time. Have a good time. You're going to be waiting for you to get back, Al. Be good. Go along. Go along, boy. Merry Christmas. 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 Where is everybody? In the patio, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Dick! Oh, why did you let us know you were coming? You're so grown up, I, I hardly know you. This is Larry Hyde. How do you do, Mr. Hyde? Richard, I think I'll run along now, dear. Must you? Yes, I can see Richard just bursting with news. I'll phone you. All right. See you later, Richard. I'm expecting you both at the Masquerade Ball tonight. Okay. Come on. Come here. Tell me everything you've been doing and don't leave out a single thing. Well, there really isn't much to tell. I go to a college and I study, you know, books and pencils and papers, play a little bridge, maybe go to a football game. Oh, yes, and I do a lot of flying. Oh, but I wrote you about all that. There's really not much to tell. What? No romance? Why do you say that? I never knew a college boy that didn't have at least one girl on the string. You know one now. Where's Ellen and Dad? Oh, doing a last minute shopping. Say, why do you let old men hang around? What do you mean? Oh, that, uh, Hodge fella. Larry? Mm. <laughs> he's just a friend of mine. And besides, he's not an old man. Yeah, he probably wants you to, to marry him or something. Oh, Dick. I don't intend to marry him or anybody else. Honey? Cross my heart. Okay. I guess he's all right. Pat! What's the matter? Do we have to go to this thing? Of course. Larry's expecting us. Oh, I feel like a sap. But, senor, you look beautiful. <laughs> you look beautiful. Darling, would you please lift this for me? Vita, will you please bring down my tape and tray? There. Well, are you... Are you going out like that? Why? Don't you think it's cute? Yeah, but it's... It's kind of revealing. <laughs> it's supposed to be. Cigars? Cigarettes? Are yeah, the cigarettes real? At five dollars a pack, for sweet charity's sake, they'd better be. Come on, let's go. The family's gone for hours. Wait a minute, I got an idea. Wait right here. Don't go away. Here we are. This will separate the men from the boys. Apparently, everything you learned at school didn't come out of books. I detect a certain worldliness that you've been covering up so far. Well, you've got to grow up sometime. Jerry said I... Who's Jerry? You never mentioned him before. Oh, just a... Guy at school. I see. And what did this guy say? Oh, nothing. Nothing important. <sighs> Jerry can be a girl's name, you know. Or didn't you? Yes. Yeah.
What is that? It's lovely. Oh, it's a song I wrote. Will you play it again? Comes a melody, lonely reverie, strange but so real. Somehow I feel, ba ba bum, ba ba bum, ba ba. Must I always bear words on no other? Plainly I see, ba 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 ba, na na na, na na na. Did you write that for her? Tell you there isn't any her. What's the matter with you, Dick? What's happened to you? You've never acted like this before. And you're spoiling everything. Can't you tell me? I'm sorry. Forgive me, I... I don't feel well. I must have had too much to drink at the party. Then you're not angry with me. Not you, Pat. Not ever you. Good night, darling. You'll feel much better tomorrow. Yes, Pat. I, I feel all right now. Good night. Good night. Where have they put us? All the girls on the third floor. All right, thank you very much. Hello, Alan. What kept you so long? I got a new car for Christmas. I drove it up from the south. That's fine. Have you got a date for the house parties? Yes. Yes, I've got a date. Well, that's fine. I'd like you to meet my date. This is Ann Marshall, and... All right, I'll see you later. Well, who does he think he is? Oh, that's Robert Gordon's son. When you've got that much money, you can be a little bit of a waste. Come on, Tom. I'm running dry. Oh. No, I just arrived a couple of minutes ago. Yes, I drove up, but never mind that now. I just called to tell you that you're my date for the house party. Are you nuts or just tight? Or both? You can't take me there. Well, I'm coming to the club to get you. All right, Dick. Get your coat. Okay. I'll be ready in a minute. Check, please.
some nightclub singer. She's got a lot of nerve coming here. At least your friend Dick ought to have better taste. Hey, Alan, what's the big idea? I don't know. President, I have to prove a ball invitation. What's the matter? Afraid we'll spoil your party? <laughs> you don't have to dance with it. That's what I brought her for. All right, kid, you're on your own. Come on, Dick, let's go. Run out now? I shouldn't have to tell you. Listen, hey, we're hey, 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 take it easy. Take take please, easy. No, not... Oh, yes, we're, we're all such very nice people, aren't you, Jerry? interested in your sightseeing tours. Do you take me home or shall I call a taxi? Dick. Dick. Use your head. Do you want him to come in and find me? You're not going to feel this. Okay. I was wrong. You are like all the others. But if you ever come around again, try to remember my name is Jerry, not Pat. This very minute. Come here, you goat, and give me a kiss. Oh. oh. <laughs> you know what I've been doing? Is it safe to guess? All the way down here, I've been planning. We'll stock up the sloop, and then we'll sail down through all the keys. Might even go as far as Bimini. Oh, sounds wonderful. When do we leave? The first thing in the morning. And we can cook all of our own meals. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Dick. I don't think I'll be able to go tomorrow. I'll be busy till the first of the week. Well, you can't be doing anything that important. Would you be so awfully disappointed if we postponed it a few days? What are you going to be doing all that time? You know Larry Hodge. Mm -hmm. Well, he's building a house, and I promised to meet the decorator he's bringing down from New York. Oh. 
But it'll only be for a few days. Where are you going? Hmm? Oh, I've uh, got to change my clothes. Oh. Hurry back. You should have been there. The last set went to 14-12. Too hot for tennis. Janet play? Hardly. Eric says I'm not in my best when exercising. <laughs> Did I see Dick's car out on the drive? Yes, he just got in from school. Nice lad. We'll have to get a young girl for him. He does go out with girls now, doesn't he? Heavens, I suppose so. He just finished his first year at college. <laughs> of course he does. I remember when I was a freshman. Well, maybe I don't. <laughs> Dick, you remember Larry Hodge? Sure, Larry. Right. And I think you meant the wind. Oh, yes, of course I remember. How are you? Say, why don't we get married for him? Married? Oh, well, she's just a kid. Why, Dick? She's just two years. Hello, Dick. Oh, hello, Mary. We were hoping you'd go to the club dance with us tonight, Dick. Well, uh, Dixon, where's my drink? Uh, uh, this is for Mr. Richard. Remember, I didn't want one. Well, Dick, how about it? Shall we bring Mary along for you tonight? Do come. You'll enjoy it. All right. No, I don't think so. I wrote it. And who was the inspiration? When a young man starts to write love songs... Oh, no, no, not me. I wrote it about a fellow in my club at school. He's pretty much in love with somebody. And he finds love troublesome? What about the girl? She doesn't know about it. <laughs> it sounds like the original bashful boy. <laughs> no. No, it doesn't. This wouldn't do any good, that's all. I'm intrigued. In my day, a man in love wasn't ashamed of it. On the contrary. But she's a lot older than he is. Oh? Yes, about, about ten years older, I mean. That's not the only thing. Well, doesn't she care anything about him at all? <laughs> not in that way. In what way does she care for him, then? Oh, I've got to get started. You're going to dance? Yes. Mary's waiting for me. Isn't Pat going? She's gone. With Larry. Richard, you're running out on me, aren't you? I don't think you want to tell me the rest of the story. <laughs> That's all there is to it, Ellen. I don't think it's fair of you to leave me with a continued next week. What happens to these people? Does she come to love him the same way he loved her? And does he live happily ever after? No. Oh, dear, I always cry at unhappy endings. 
Why does it have to be that way? They're... They're kind of related. good kid and wait inside, will you? Why? Don't ask questions. Just wait inside for me and, and I'll dance every dance with you. Oh. Pat, may I speak to you for a minute? Will you pardon us, Larry, please? Sure. I'll be in the bar, sweetheart. All right. Where have you and Mary been for the past half hour? I'm going away. What? I'm going away tomorrow. Does Mother and Dad know about it? No. They'd only try to argue me out of it. They wouldn't understand. Well, I'm not so sure I do either. Why can't you tell me about it? I just can't. You know, you've changed an awful lot lately, Dick. Ever since you went to college. I can't help you. Why do you keep me shut out like this? Oh, I guess I... guess I wanted the whole world to be like last summer. But it isn't. The world hasn't changed. It's you who've changed. You're no longer the little schoolboy from St. Francis. I wish I were back then. No, you wouldn't like it anymore. You've outgrown it. Remember? You were talking about going down to the island? Well, let's just chuck everything tomorrow morning and go down there. We'll laugh and talk and have so much fun. How about it? All right. Don't forget now. Wake up. Wake up. It's, it's Pat. It's 6 o'clock. Oh. Did I sleep that long? Yeah, we... we... Oh, but you don't understand. The tide's going out. Oh. Come on. Twelve hours between tides. Why, well, that means five in the morning. Yep. Oh, the family will be frantic. No, it's my fault. I shouldn't have slept. I'm as much to blame as you are. What's the use of worrying about it? What are we going to do now? Let's build a fire. Yeah, and bring the radio and stuff here. This was family Gordon, remember? At the request of the Coast Guard, we repeat, all vessels in this area and shore residents are notified to watch for the missing sloop, the Dolly M, which is long overdue at the Corinth Yacht Club. Any news of this vessel can be communicated to... What was that? Coast Guard. Us? Uh-huh. Well, look, Pat, I think we'd better wait until there's more light. There's a lot of shoals out there. Every hour we stay here, we have to go out with the tide. Mm. Let's see. 
Ten to five. Yes, we can clear the bar. Wait till I get off my shoes. Oh, well, what for? We... No use of both of us getting wet. I can carry you. Why, you couldn't carry me. Five dollars as I can. <laughs> it's a bet. Am I that heavy? I'll bet you'd be willing to lose a five just for the privilege of ducking me. <laughs>
I, I think I'll go and lie down for a while. Do try and relax. I've got something to tell you. Does it require my motherly expression or just girls together? No, I'm very serious. In fact, I've never been more serious. Suppose you tell me. Well, that night on the boat, Dick said he was going away and nothing could stop him. And then we came back to the club and it was very late. And he asked me if he could kiss me goodbye. And I said yes. I know. He's in love with you. Yes, he told me. Oh, he didn't know he was telling me. I know you've blamed yourself, Pat. But I knew of this before any of us. My dear, we share whatever blame there is. Dick was my job. And I've made a terrible mess of it. What about Larry? Isn't he your job, too? I wrote him a letter a week ago and told him I wasn't going to marry him. But you still love him, don't you? I don't know. Hi, Dick. Hi, Dick. Hello, Dick. I say, what, what happened to Priestley? There were so many of them back there, I missed him when the going got tough. Got down in flames. Oh, no. Hit the water just over the mole. Rotten luck, that. Up. Oh, not too bad, though. About two of them down with him. I never saw a chap so intent on meeting St. Peter. Any mail for me? Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. Via the clipper, no less. Do you suppose we ought to write some letters for old Priestley? Wasn't there a girl or something back home? Mm, there was a girl. You recall when Priestley went on leave about a fortnight ago? They were going to be married. But she told him she was so in love with some Johnny in the guard that the Colonel said something. I say, no wonder he went haywire. Mm. Hey, Gordon, do you get a sister named Patricia? Yes, why? It says here in Dorothy D Dale's column that she's going to marry that polo player, Lawrence Hodge. <laughs> That's old stuff by now. Have a drink, fellas. It's on me. Thanks. I'll have a bourbon. Thanks, Thanks you. You fly yourself in the ground one day. As you were. See, you're curious about my visit to Wing Canal. We've been entrusted with a dangerous and vital mission. Here's the town of Lefebvre. Now the enemy's advanced to fly there. There's a fuel dump half a kilometer northeast of the town which must be destroyed. Will you escort the bomber, sir? No. No bomber could ever get close enough. It's a job for fast, maneuverable ships, hedge-hopping the whole way. It's a job for the fourth fighter squadron. She'll want three men. Two at 5,000 feet as decoys for anti-aircraft and protection. The third must sneak in low and lay the eggs. His chances of stubbing a toe are not exactly remote. The demons, gentlemen. Well, I say, where are you going? Where are you going with me? I'm not married. I might as well take a chance.
afternoon. Go oh, on feeling fine, Father. You still isn't much, much feeling at ease. It may take a long time, but the doctors insist they can cure you. I'm sure. Uh, excuse me, Richard. Thank you. My dear child, Mr. and Mrs. Gordon. Father, is he here? Yes. We've searched for weeks. Well, he was sent here at his own request, as soon as they discharged him from the base hospital. How is he? We were told of his injury. Well, he's unable to walk yet. May I please see him first? Why, of course, my dear. This way. I'd like to take him home as soon as he can travel. I'm very glad, Kim. There has been much uh, confusion in his mind. But after seeing you again, you must go the rest of the way alone. Thank you, Father. I should have known you couldn't run away. Not even for myself. We've come to take you home. I am home, Ben. I found my home. You're crying. Please don't. I'm not crying. If I am, it's... It's only because I'm so happy to see you again. Pat, I have something to tell you. I've decided to enter the church. Father O'Malley has already taken the first steps for me. Please don't be unhappy. I've found what I've wanted for so long. I must have known at St. Francis's, but I wasn't sure until now. Are you so sure? Yes. Hello, dear. Hello, son. He told you? Does it make you unhappy? How could I be? And I can see that he's really happy for the first time. Yes, I believe he is. This is what he's always wanted. He told me that the first day he came home from St. Francis. And then after that, when things became so confused and distracted him, he held on to it. And deep down, he's never changed. You understand that I couldn't let him come to us then, that he was not yet ready. How can I tell you? Contentment, peace. This time I know beyond any question. Goodbye, son. Goodbye, Dad. Goodbye, Richard. Goodbye, Mom. 